van life, baby. Something that can offer so much freedom. It seems like wild camping or staying in your vehicle overnight is pretty much banned and illegal. So much adventure. Careful, slowly does it, slowly flipping does it. Holy guacamole. <laughs> Yet it can be full of as many lows as highs. Whoa, what was that? What's happened to my brakes? What's the verdict? Today I'm introducing my girlfriend to it to find out if life on the road could be a reality or if I'm just plain delusional. Mayday, mayday! Why is everything going wrong? I'm getting the death stare and the little mm -mm -mm, the little no. cough or sound of you up again Will. Well just like any good van adventure this one starts in a supermarket car park. The van is an absolute mess we've got stuff scattered absolutely everywhere bags all over the place the bed isn't even made more bags here there's a lot of stuff to put away and get organized and of course there's a very important person that I need to introduce you to. Before the introductions I had some very important road trip chores that I needed to get done first. Oh my god, how many clothes has she brought with her? Some fancy slippers. They look warm. With two people living in such a small space for the next five days, everything had to be clean, tidy, organised and have its own place. She's calling me. She's calling me. Hello? Have I got butter? Uh, no, we're gonna need some butter, yeah. Just to get the formalities out the way, everybody. This is Evie, I'll introduce you later at some point. <laughs> we need to put all of this away. The van is all set up, fridge is stocked, clothes are put away, bags in there everything nice clean and tidy so one thing i've mentioned in a couple of the recent videos is the fridge absolutely bloody honks but <laughs> i've got a new camera lady who needs a little bit of training <laughs> i bought these off amazon i can't remember how much they cost me but they're things that you stick in the fridge you peel this off it doesn't smell really at all smell that it basically absorbs all of the bad smells in the fridge so by the time i chuck this in give it a couple of hours, the smell hopefully should go. All of the van life chores are done, tyres are pumped up, we kind of got a little bit of water left, van is clean and tidy and now it's time to actually do an hour and a half drive from Swindon into South Wales and towards the Brecon Beacons. If you're wondering as well why is Evie driving, that's because, well she's driven the van many many times. Although there's a few situations this morning where I was getting an earful for telling her to stay left or not crash the van. Oh my God, don't panic, don't panic. For the next five days, we were gonna be living on the road and exploring a part of the UK we've not been to before, all whilst introducing Evie to the highs and lows of van life. <laughs> only about two miles away from the bridge that takes you over from England into Wales. Abergawa. For the rest of these videos that you see of us traveling around Wales in the van, you're going to have to excuse my pronunciation of the places here because I haven't got a bloody clue how to pronounce anything. Welcome to the first stop in Wales, right down in the south of the Brecon Beacons in a quaint little Welsh town called Aber 
Gaveni. We're only doing a short little drive actually through the town center to basically bypass through the town and actually get on hopefully the highest mountain road in Wales. But we're gonna swap drivers, we're gonna go and use the public toilets. Evie's gonna jump into a charity shop to see if we can find a bikini or a swimsuit because I fancy some cold water swimming here in Wales. Pound absolute bargain that. Welcome to Wales, where the shop owners are having a nap. An absolute bargain of a place. Oh. Let me tell you, Abba Caveni, <laughs> if you're looking for a bargain, if you're looking for a charity shop, it's the place to go. If you're looking for a swimsuit, not so much. Well, if you're... Um, yeah, if you're about 80 anything. years old. We've got about an hour until the sun goes down, so this road is actually a 22 mile single track road. So uh, one, hopefully there's gonna be a place to actually park up there for the night and hopefully it's relatively okay to drive on. But I thought it sounded pretty fun. Well, we're going slightly off the beaten track or the main road and already before we've even got to this mountainous road we're hitting the single track roads 22 miles of this holy guacamole weight limit three and a half tons oh that doesn't whoa what's that what's happened to my brakes no. What? Brake fluid level low. That's why my brakes are playing up. You can't go up there with no brakes. No, we can't go up there with no brakes. I knew there was some uh, van maintenance jobs that I needed to do that I didn't get time to do. I'll keep... Ah, can you hear it? Yeah. I've never seen that before. Oh my flipping God almighty. It's this. Maybe it was because we were on a hill. Holy like... shit, this is a bit narrow. Um, um, how clear am I? Wow, this is tell, tight as a duck's hill. ass. I don't want to scratch their lovely house. <gasps> do we do it? Oh my god. Oh my god, that's so steep. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes in life it's not worth risking it for a biscuit. So new game plan. Go to a petrol station get some brake fluid and then uh, come up with a plan from there. What's the verdict? I can confirm it's low. <laughs> There's literally nothing in there <laughs> at all. Actually shone a light in there, shone a light, shone a light, no. shone a light in there and um, yeah can't see any liquid whatsoever so I think we made the right call. I found a park of about 10 minutes from where we've just pulled over but we are going to go grab some breaker fluid from somewhere, hopefully at a service station, petrol station or a garage, and then uh, head to tonight's park up. Well, we've arrived at uh, Abergavenny Brake and Clutch Motor Factories. I'm pretty sure they'll have what we need. So you can see here, here's the brake fluid bottle. There's literally none in that. Here's the min line, here's the max line. So I'm just going to top it up with that and hopefully that does the job. My brake fluid is right to the top. I actually think there was brake fluid in it. I'm a little bit confused right now because I thought the brake fluid reservoir was completely empty because I was tapping on it and I couldn't see any movement but now I've just filled it up and it's not going anywhere so it's definitely full but the problem is you're not meant to have your brake fluid to the very top. What was the company that guy just said? ATS. ATS. There's a garage around here who I might just go and uh, double check with them. <laughs> it is a little bit nippy out here, so wow. I'm going to get inside the van and then I'll talk to you about tonight's park up and what the hell has gone on with the brakes. 
What are you doing? That was in the way as well. Oh, close it up. I was like, it's not going. <laughs> <gasps> what? There we go. Quick little update for what went on with the brakes. As you saw, we were driving on some fairly steep roads. The brake fluid light warning on the dash popped up and then literally went off. Also at the same time, the brakes started crunching. So I thought, hmm, something's going on here. Um, I then checked the fluid level. I thought it was, I thought there was nothing in it, but apparently it was already full. Went to the garage, filled it up to the top and then thought, oh shit, you're not actually meant to fill up brake fluid all the way to the very top of the bottle. So uh, then went to a garage, asked them to come and check it quickly. They basically said, it's absolutely fine. Sometimes when you're on a steep hill, the fluid level and the sensor can kind of be a bit, what's the word I'm looking for here? Temperamental. Temperamental, there we go. So everything is fine, hunky-dory, just wasted about an hour of our life, but hey ho, we move on. Tonight's park up was a little bit of a pain in the ass to find because in this area, the entire region of Brecon Beacons, it seems like wild camping or staying in your vehicle overnight is pretty much banned and illegal. However, the one place we have found seems to be a pretty decent location. So tonight's plan, I've been told that I'm allowed to watch the football because Chelsea versus Liverpool. Evie has told me that, um, you know, she's not taking five days off to sit in the van and watch football, but tonight I'm allowed to. So um, <laughs> get some dinner on the go, chili con carne, chill out, watch the football. And then tomorrow morning, I promise you, we will head up to Wales highest mountain road and get that done. As cringy as this next bit is, I've got to show you this. Evie's gone and bought some Tesco pajamas, striped pajamas. How much were they? 13 pounds. 13 pound. And I don't own a pair of pajamas, but now tonight I do. <laughs> they're not quite matching. Those are softer than mine though. Yeah, they're gonna be lovely. So I now, as a 29 year old male, have my first pair in about 15 years of pajama bottoms, which I cannot wait to get into. Here we go, pajamas on. <laughs> Who wore them better? Definitely me. These are comfortable to be fair. Lovely and lovely and soft. Those are too small for you. Yours aren't as soft as mine. Yeah, but yours, you're probably still gonna sweat in them because they're too soft. I usually sleep bollock naked, but I've been advised quite recently that I should be sleeping with pants on or with something over the top. What's the reason for that? Stop you sweating. Stop you sweating apparently. Well, Not so just me specifically. On me. <laughs> so pajamas okay. is the way forward in the van. I feel like a little kid at Christmas. I, need that. <laughs> I can't, you on it. You need to lift up. I've got my legs squirted out like a baby right now. Is it like a baby? Squirted? What? S Splayed? Splayed, sp splayed out like a baby because um well for evie to chop and stuff she needs the table but i'm sat on the table can you lift it or not yeah <sighs> when it's got the weight of somebody on it you can't move it and now the bed has a big old dip in it but it shouldn't fall through Shizen, Hagen, Schlagen. When I guess. Mayday, mayday. Why is everything going wrong? Oh my God. Do you know what as well? I thought before we came away, I did check the bottle. Mm. And? I thought it felt okay. We could be out of gas. I think we are out of gas. Try it one more time. I can't even hear it coming out. There's oh, in there. bollocks. <sighs> So a potential brake failure that was actually just a false alarm, but now the gas running out, which isn't a false alarm, but have no fear, I have a solution. That electric hob thing. Yeah, and it's cooking with electric, <gasps> which means tomorrow before we do anything, we need to try and find some replacement gas. 
what else is going to go wrong tonight? <laughs> What? The rice cooker. I've used the rice cooker before. Are you serious? Deadly serious. I thought you had like an electric hob. I have got an electric hob. Where? Down there as well, but I've used the rice cooker before. It will work. Why would we not just use the electric hob? We can try the electric hob. What do you mean try? Why would it not work? It would work. Well, it's better to use that. Why not? Your rice cooker's good. You can't even control the temperature on that. You don't need to, just let it... Yes, you do. <laughs> right, try the electric cob then. Yeah, I've not used that in bloody ages. <laughs> I'm getting the death stare. And the little... <clears throat> the little no. cough or sound of, you fucked up again, Will. So in the past, I've used my rice cooker when I ran out of gas, but I also do have this uh, electric cooker, which I bought as a backup in case of emergencies, and tonight it's going to come in super handy. We're cooking with electric! <laughs> Lesson learnt for anyone that watches the channels and actually gets a bit of travel advice from it. Always carry an electric gas hob with you if you have electric or a spare gas canister. Drain that. What do you mean? It's like bloody rice pudding. It's not. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, I can confirm nothing else has gone wrong so far this evening. Thankfully, the leisure battery seems to be, uh, well, continuing to work, which means the chili con carne and rice is going to be successful. T minus five minutes and food can be in the belly. I'm absolutely exhausted, ready to chill out and uh, do pretty much nothing. We may actually have to end up going to a different car park because the video that I'm trying to currently upload on YouTube, I've been uploading for the last 45 minutes and it's only on 15%. And uh, doing YouTube for a living, I need to basically have Wi-Fi to upload videos, to get content approved, this, that, and the other. So we may actually end up moving to a better place with some sort of phone signal. Also means I can watch the football. Did you see, see the lights then? When I turned that off, the lights flickered. Really? Yeah. Don't say that. <laughs> they did. Or the lights Something are gonna go out. Something did anyway. God, not enough. Because if the electricity goes, then we really are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, thank you very much. Top up my wine. Cold red wine in a plastic cup. In a it's, van. It's not too cold. Anymore, to Doesn't get any more luxurious than that. Mm -hmm. Followed by a hefty bowl of homemade chili con carne. All thank you to Evie. You're welcome, darling. Thank you. Right, we're going to tuck into this, enjoy dinner, and then um, just chill out for the evening. So, uh, We'll catch you guys tomorrow morning. More cheese? I think there's a bit too much rice to balance. Do you want more cheese? Finally, after a very, very slow morning, we are on the way to Gospel Pass. A few troubles this morning, but we managed to fill up the entire water tank for free at the petrol station, which is just brilliant. I then tried to find some gas at three different places without any luck. So we're back on the road ready to go and see Wales' highest mountain road. The Gospel Pass, a stretch of 22 mile narrow country road that weaves its way through the Welsh countryside. A road where no man or woman should ever really go, but stupid people often do stupid things. Oh, and I should also let you know, we're not alone anymore. We've got company. Let's go to Wales, he said. It'd be fun. You would not want to do this road in any wider vehicle that I've got. <laughs> Careful, slowly does it, slowly flipping does it. Holy guacamole. <laughs> Hold your horses, careful of the trees. I am so glad we upgraded the suspension. The problem is there's a shed load of low hanging trees and bushes and everything. There's potholes galore. <laughs> Come on, Mary! <laughs> wow! Oh, this isn't an off-road vehicle, but it's really <laughs> like this is an off-road adventure. My God! It's getting worse. Can we drive through that? Yeah, you'll be fine. Just go slow. Don't stop in the prod, Levy. 
<laughs> the road continued to meander its way through the countryside, but I've got to say, me, Evie, and Mary, we were born for adventures like this. What Neil Neil's going to be loving this. We're with Will. Everything can go wrong. If it's going to go wrong, we're with Will, and you will guarantee it will all go wrong. I can confirm that, in fact, nothing did go wrong. For once, everything was going right. We were on the road to some of the most incredible scenery that Wales had to offer. Whoa! This is exactly what I was talking about, and this is what I wanted. Open space, the open road, sheep, countryside, hills and mountains everywhere. This is what gives me love. Love, life and excitement, and just that pure feeling of adventure. Wow, this is a little bit of a drop off here. <laughs> Good choice, William. Good choice. So I'm glad with all of the problems from yesterday with the gas, with the brake fluid, oil and whatever else happened, coming back up this morning when the weather is like this, it's absolutely stunning. It was well worth it. It now well and truly feels like we are in the Brecon Beacons and we are in Wales. Because I mean, look at it. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. This is actually a place that we could have parked up last night, but with the, the brake problems, we obviously didn't want to come up this road. You're looking very cold. I don't see a better opportunity to end the first part of this Wales road trip days we're going to be continuing on through the Brecon Beacon so if you guys want to check out the videos coming up make sure to subscribe and make sure to give the video a like and drop a comment and let me know if it's nice to be back on the road and nice for you to meet Evie who uh, I'm sure you'll meet plenty more times in the future as always guys thanks for watching and I'll catch you in uh, next week's video